Hi guys, welcome back to Gardening with Creations by DX & Co. Today is part two of setting up the indoor greenhouse. I'm gonna go over how I'm setting up my lighting and why the positioning of the lights is so important for the overall plant growth. So hopefully you guys can learn a thing or two on how to adjust your lights and make sure that you guys are set up for success when you get your seeds started in this growing season. Let's get started. So as you may know, the most important things for plant growth is soil, temperature, and of course, the lighting. So I do have a lighting video. I'll link it in the video description below. Understanding grow lights and why I chose these particular domes, which I'll try to link something similar for you, as well as the actual light bulbs in the description below as well, in case you want to purchase something similar after seeing this. So you can clip these particular style lights to a pole like that. I've done that just so this one doesn't get jostled around or these ones do have a hook. So I could actually hang these from the bar here based on this particular hook. Now I've chosen not to do that because I am setting them on these shelves and I'm gonna go over exactly why I've set them on these shelves right above this shelf, which gives us the ability to set some plants directly below. And then I've set another one of those same exact lights directly above this shelf, which again, gives us the ability to set plants directly there. As you know, there'll be plants here. So with that, you wouldn't have any light shining through to this area. Now, if I wanted to, I can put another light in this section and allow for the actual floor itself to get light at that point. So I'd have the ability to put stuff on the floor. Now I will be putting an actual drip tray down there, which is gonna work out well, and I'll show you guys that in part three. Now you may have noticed that I also have a different style light hanging in the back there. It's one of my older style lights, and I did wanna show you that as well. So as we go through today, I'm gonna show you specifically that fluorescent style light versus a light bulb style in a dome and show you the difference and why I've got them set up the way that I do. So let's keep going. Now, of course, the most important part of any lighting setup is actually your electrical. So understanding how you run your cords is something you really need to pre-plan when you're dealing with any electrical. So notice that I've run my cord for this particular one right down there and then I'm running it into a surge protector. Now, this surge protector is not going to remain inside of this greenhouse. In fact, I'm going to lift up this flap and tuck it up behind there because inside of a greenhouse, as you guessed, can house a lot of humidity. So you never want to leave electrical cords inside of a greenhouse. Otherwise, you're risking fire, so on and so forth. Now, they do make outdoor surge protectors and for safety, that would be my recommendation, would be an outdoor type of setup uh, if you have it, if you don't have it properly run. Now this particular surge protector that I'm running everything into actually runs into probably the most important part of all of this. And that is, you may have guessed it, it's a timer, a simple, timer this is a non-digital one you can certainly get a digital one if you wanted to the most important part about growing things indoor is having consistency with your lighting most people would recommend about a 12 hour timer that's how i have mine set up is 12 hours on 12 hours off so it kicks on before i wake up in the morning turns itself off at night when i go to bed and i don't have to worry about it now I can manually switch it off at the search protector if I needed to for some reason or another, but it is very important to have some consistency with your lighting. Okay, so now that we have the basic equipment, let's talk about running our cords. The most important thing is to make sure that A, you have enough room with your cords. That fluorescent light that I showed you earlier, I actually tried to hang from the ceiling. It worked, would work out great. I'll show you the crossbar where it would hang from. But unfortunately, the cord's just not long enough, so you have to be willing to rethink your decision if your cords aren't long enough 
or make sure that you're buying lights with the proper cord length that you need. Because one thing you don't want to do is have cords and wires all over your, your way when you're trying to make sure that you're gardening and not getting them wet and so on and so forth. So this feature that I have here is just like a simple twist tie. Now it is actually something that I use every day in the garden. Garden twist ties basically that you can purchase for actually helping stake your plants. Try to find a link for you guys if you want to purchase something like that. I use them for my cords because they're completely reusable. I can simply untwist this, move the cords as needed, and I can reuse this in the garden. I save these and I can actually use them to help stake my tomato plants when they get taller. And I can use them if I needed to, if I was in a bind and one of my plants was falling over, I could use them to help stake my plant very easily as my plants grow inside of this greenhouse even. Now let's talk about why I position the lights the way they are instead of hanging them differently based on PPFD or photosynthetic photon flux density. That's a mouthful. I actually make meters for it on apps. Let me show you one that I've been using. So this app that I'm using right now on my phone is actually reading from the sensor or front camera on my phone. This app is called a PPFD meter. I got it right off of Google Play. It is free. I think it's awesome that they allow you to measure this for free. So whoever created this app, kudos to them. PPFD is just what's referred to as, I mentioned, photosynthesis meter. So what they're doing is measuring the distance of light. And you can see right here on mine, it says low, which is completely understandable. I'm all the way down to the shelf. This light's a good foot and a half basically up away from it. Now watch this top number as I raise this phone up towards the light. Notice how that number starts to increase. So imagine that I've got a seed tray here or I've got plants. So it's gonna be a little bit higher. As the plant starts to grow, it's gonna be a little bit higher, a little bit higher. And so I may need to make some adjustments on this. I may have to take this light off the shelf and actually mount it to the side of the bar or put it underneath the shelf, for example, or wire that hook to the actual shelf above it so that way this light is closer to that. But I'm not going to know that until I've got the proper level of my plants in there. So this goes back to me saying that you need to make some adjustments. Now, a typical plant in early stages, seedling stages, only needs somewhere around 200 to 400 PPFD. And a plant that's in flowering stage, like a tomato, for example, needs somewhere around 600 to 800. And now we're getting a lot of glare off the phone itself. Imagine here, the taller this plant gets, the closer it gets to the light, I am now turning green. You see good at the very bottom of the screen there. I know you can't see the top of the phone, but I'll read it to you. It says 700 is the PPFD, and I am still a good three inches away from that light. So why bother with PPFD? Can you just throw any light onto your plants and hope for the best results? Yes, I have actually thrown different lights and tested different lights and the light temperature, otherwise recorded in Kelvin, is very important and I will show you some different temperatures and things like that as we record as well. But these particular ones that I'm using are actually 6500 Kelvin, which is what daylight is actually done. If you actually read on here at the very bottom it says natural daylight is 6500 Kelvin. It says it right on there. These bulbs that I purchased, I will put a link in the description below for you. Those bulbs that I'm using are a 6500 Kelvin. Now light is also measured in lumens or LUTs and that is how the distance of how far you can actually have your light away from your plant. So these particular ones may not be a very strong lumen. The, the higher the lumen, the further you can have your plants away. But this particular tool is a great tool for you to understand 
you can look up your different plants that you're growing and understand the actual distance they need to be at what stage of their life and that'll help you understand how to adjust your lighting. Let me show you the fluorescent light and how it measures compared to just the standard 6500 Kelvin light bulb that's in these silver domes. So we've got our fluorescent lights hanging here. Just a two bulb, 18 inch tube light system and I have grown plants with these before. But let me show you the difference in the, the distance here. It's about the same distance right there as I was with the shelves. I'm at a 24. For reference, I was close to a 187, 197 on the other light. Well, as I raise this here, yeah, my PPFD is starting to raise, but very slowly. And now I am almost to the bottom of that light and my PPFD is only at 80. So I would need to be basically sitting on top of my plants to grow with this style light. That's the difference your lighting can make for you. So let me show you this one here. Now this particular dome, as you may have noticed, is very different. It is actually a reptile dome. But you may have noticed that there's a different style light coming off. It's almost like a pink or a red hue. Let me actually show you. I'm going to turn the brightness down on the camera to give you guys the ability to see this here. See how that's giving off a pink or a purplish even hue? Well, that is actually what they reference as a plant bulb. You can buy this bulb for $5. Notice the inside of this dome is still silver, just like the outside. This is actually, this dome is actually from our reptile, our bearded dragon. And this is an extra dome that we had. And I put one of the $5 from Walmart plant bulbs in here to see what kind of difference that it would make. This is one that I've used in the past. Now, I've discussed before that a plant bulb is not necessarily a great bulb. That color is great for when it starts flowering. It is not great for getting green like the 6500 or the white color is actually that color temperature is. This particular red temperature is great for flowering. It's great for when you're in those fruiting stages. So if this is something you're planning to grow inside all year round, then you would want to have some of that different color temperature. But if you're just getting seeds and things started and you just want greenery in order to get them outside, then you really don't need that color temperature. But let me show you on the PPFD meter what that one looks like. That PPFD meter is actually at a 38. So just as low as that fluorescent bulb at that point. As we move up closer to that light, we are only getting a PPFD, I think we max out at about 110. And I'm almost right on top of that light. So just because that bulb is cheaper and labeled as a plant bulb, doesn't mean it's gonna be the right solution for you to grow your plants. It's all about understanding the stage of life that your plant is in, and that would really be a supplemental light with your other Kelvin temperature. You don't want that as your sole light to grow plants. Now that we've discussed the different types of lighting and how it's so important to the distance of your light, let's discuss actually where your plant placement is. So right now, as you might have guessed, this particular PPF meter is measuring dead center in the plant. But watch what happens if we slowly move this towards the outside of the light. Notice that the number starts to go down the further we get out away from the center of the light. And as we go back to the center of the light, and then back away to the right hand side. That's because obviously, as you may have guessed, the center of the light 
is going to be your strongest area of focus. So that's something to keep in mind as you're putting plants under different types of lights is understand the offcast of how much light you're actually losing in the further corners. What you're going to start to get is seedlings that are leaning towards the center to get more light. So the broader area of light that you can get, although it may be lower amount of light, may be worth it to let you get an, a broader cast of light. That's why using a tool like this, once you've set your seedlings in there, is so important. Now, for the sake of experimenting, I've gone ahead and mounted one of the lights, the dome lights, underneath the shelf so that it's very close to the PPF meter, as you see. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in here. And did you see how high that just shot up? Immediately went from an 18 that we were getting from two shelves up above it up to a 525 and we're measuring in the green. My tape measure says that our distance of our light bulb is about nine inches away. Thanks for watching this tutorial on how I'm setting up my lights. You may find you need to set up yours differently. As most of you know, you don't need lights in order to germinate seeds. You only need heat. But you will eventually need lights. And of course, we all know it'll be a lot easier to run these cords before you actually have the plants in there and you're dealing with water and soil and so on and so forth. So it's best to run these now. They also supplement heat inside of that greenhouse. So it actually helps to germinate your seeds, give a little bit more heat inside of there. So as always, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you're staying safe and enjoying your gardens. Thanks for watching.